take a look at threat protection in Zscaler Internet Access. So we come across to policy, malware protection, and we can look at the malware configuration where we're going to inspect inbound and outbound traffic across HTTP, FTP over HTTP, and FTP. And it's important to understand that to inspect HTTPS, you need to do SSL inspection, which then enables it to be inspected as HTTP. So we're going to look for known malware, whether it's viruses, unwanted applications, trojans, worms, or ransomware, as well as known adware and spyware. We can always write an exception if something triggers to say, do not sc scan specific URLs. And we're going to explicitly block password protected files or unscannable files. If a password protected file contains a virus, it's impossible to scan inside that file. So we should block those files and there should be a help desk process to have those files analyzed offline before the user can download the file. Additionally, we then have advanced threat protection. So unknown malware. So we have our page risk score which we'd invariably set around 30. And a page risk score is generated based upon the content of the page, where the page links from, the age of the site, where the page links to, and objects on that page. We can then understand about command and control servers and command and control traffic by looking at the payload as traffic passes through the cloud. We understand malicious active content again from the sites, vulnerable ActiveX controls, if they still exist, browser exploits and file format vulnerabilities through our feeds from things like the Microsoft Active Protection Program. We can explicitly block malicious URLs if we want to. We can also use our analysis for fraud prevention. So looking at phishing sites, sp suspected phishing sites by analyzing the contents and the, of the page and how the page looks. Um, spyware, so an infected machine calling home, web-based spam, um, crypto mining, where an infected machine might be making callbacks for crypto mining, and known spyware and adware sites can be explicitly blocked here. We can block IRC tunneling, SSH tunneling, and anonymizer websites by looking at the, the content and triggering within the IPS functionality. And we can also look for cross-site scripting vulnerabilities which might steal cookies or malicious requests stealing content there. We explicitly block we can explicitly block countries, in this case Iran, North Korea, Syria, we should perhaps add Russia to our list of sites we want to block. Um, and then by looking at the, the payload, the transaction we can understand with its BitTorrent or Tor or VoIP traffic tunneling through HTTP and HTTPS traffic. So I'll click Save to any of those changes and we can click Activate. We can always write security exemptions for things where we may be overblocking or you specifically want to allow a transaction through. We can also then through our policy come to sandbox. So our sandbox policy dictates what file types, if they've not been seen before, um, or they have a signature that needs to be scanned, should go through the sandbox. So in this example, we have a rule that says for PDF documents from the category of website business and economy for users in a specific group, and a department of sales um, will be allowed to download PDF documents. However, the files will still be sent for the sandbox and if they're detected as malicious, they will be subsequently blocked and therefore there'll be an alert sent, which means that the, um, a security individual can go and remediate that threat on an endpoint. This is about mitigating or finding the balance between the risk of vulnerabilities and the business being able to operate. And so in this case, PDF files have been deemed low risk if they're coming from a URL category of business and economy, um, and therefore should be allowed down to the user. Our other policy says for 
Android files, Windows executables, and other executable types will always be quarantined on the first time. And if they're detected as malicious, then they will be blocked permanently. We're also going to use our artificial intelligence engine to pre-process files and speed up the efficacy um, of detection of malware. And then we have a everything else will pass through our scan all, which says they're going to be allowed and scanned and subsequent file downloads will be allowed. And then the default policy for suspicious destinations is to allow and scan and block on subsequent downloads. Browser control is a blunt tool to be able to block specific browsers that are deemed unvulnerable. Um, Browser control is a blunt tool to control which versions of browsers should be allowed to utilize the service and prevent vulnerabilities in those browsers. So we can check vulnerabilities in browsers and we can block specific browsers if we find them to be outside of our corporate policy. So we could block up to IE11 and specific versions of um, the Chrome Edge browser or whatever. So I'll revert those changes. So let's run some security tests. We can download those uh, an encrypted or password protected archive and you will get blocked access based on policy. We're also going to scan through archives up to six layers deep. So this one has five levels of um, depth with the ICAR virus inside it. So it's triggering on the standard virus protection. Um, if we look at files that contain embedded macro viruses, in this case a, a PowerPoint file, it's going to be blocked as a malicious virus. Um, but we can go further and, th and consider files that might be um, more advanced. So going through our um, cloud sandbox. So we'll try and download a, uh, a Trojan and you can see that it's being blocked here. Other things like our IRC tunneling. As a request, it's trying to touch. As a request, it's trying to tunnel IRC over an HTTP connection and it's blocked because of that payload. Or a botnet command and control traffic because of the payload, again, it's triggering the, the call home to say my machine is infected and I'm waiting for a command. So there are many different vulnerabilities that we might consider passing through and scanning with Zscaler internet access. So let's come back to our um, analytics engine and understand what traffic has gone through the sandbox. So let's come back to the dashboard and let's look at um, our security dashboard. So we can see that we've triggered for a number of files. There are files that have gone through the sandbox and files that have triggered based on viruses. And we can see the different types of communication, browser exploits, unauthorized communications, malicious content, or botnet callback. So if we go into our analytics, and let's take a look at the web insights, and we know we've done this over the last couple of minutes, let's apply some filters here. And we can see the traffic, and we can see how it's been blocked, and why it's been blocked. So if we look at the logs over the last five minutes, we can see the files. We can see the iCar virus was blocked. We can see the PowerPoint files. We can see um, the IRC tunneling. We can see some other server probe traffic that was, uh, that was blocked. If we specifically go back 15 minutes, and let's look for um, action It's blocked. We can see that the sandbox file here was blocked. 
this was our dropper for, for an APK and we can scroll across and we can see all of the information about the file um, and if we come all the way across we will see the MD5 hash and we can click on that MD5 hash which will open the sandbox report and the sandbox report will tell us the classification of the file so if we had a 92% confidence that it was malicious and it was because it did a number of things it tried to bypass security in this case it was an APK file it also tried to install other APKs um, we can see that it tried to leak information about the device it also dropped other files on there and we can see information about the, the file type itself um, and the calls that it tried to make to call home or download other content. So the Zscaler Cloud Sandbox enables us to scan content and block content that's malicious as a zero-day vulnerability.